Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, um, around the world, and welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, please like, subscribe, and share. Um, when you're subscribing, if you just want the odd one, you just click once, and then it'll give the option to personalise, or um, I think, the, I forget what the other one is, but whatever it is, you can just click any one of them. I'm not quite sure which each one of them does, actually. But anyway, that's only if you want to subscribe. If you just want to like it, you just like it. Anyway, um, I decided to talk about, I like to share things that I'm learning about. Because, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I may share with my viewers, it might be things that you already know. But there are things that I I am learning. So if I'm learning it, I'm assuming that there has to be people out there who don't know it either. Because everybody's at different levels of involvement and different levels of knowledge. So, you know, sometimes I, I, I share things and I'll get comments as if to say, oh, you know, you don't know, know this or you don't know that or you've got that wrong. I don't claim to be a expert. I don't claim to be a specialist. I'm just sharing information and I expect, as you will see in the description, for you to check it out for yourself. I normally put links with the source. You can see um, where I get the source from and you can work it out for yourself, whether or not it's fact or whether or not you think it's fiction or whether it's just my opinion. So today I came, well not today, over the last week, I think, over the last weekend, I came across the five eyes. I never knew about the five eyes. The five eyes are the five intelligence um, agencies um, around, I think they're USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and USA. Did I say USA? USA, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and UK. I think I left off the UK. So those are the five eyes, the five intelligent eye, um, agencies who do not believe that privacy is an absolute. They believe that privacy should be discretionary and that the techni technical companies should allow access. Now, um, for those of you, I don't know who, those of you who heard about Lord Snowden, I think Edward Snowden, Lord Snowden, Edward Snowden, I think it was in 2013, he leaked that the five eyes were spying on each other's citizens because they're not allowed by domestic law to spy on their own citizens. So what they were doing, apparently, according to Edward Snowden, they were spying on each other's citizens and swapping the information. And of course, once they got found out, I don't know what happened. I don't know if there was a penalty. I don't know what the outcome was because I didn't follow it. I, I remember hearing about it, but I wasn't it's not as if I was doing videos then I was really interested and yeah I could go and check it out now but sometimes when you do the research you can be researching forever and I don't have the time I like to donate um, a certain amount of time during the day to do a quick research have an opinion on it and share that opinion with you guys so the five eyes I'm going to read what I found just in case you don't know about it you may well know and if then you can switch it off because I'm not going to tell you anything too exciting um, if you already know I doubt if I'm going to give you any additional information but for those of you who've never heard of the five eyes and there's actually 40, 14 eyes and it's ironic that they call themselves eyes because that's exactly what they want to do they want to have their eyes on you but I wouldn't have thought that they would have given themselves a title that was so obvious and when you look at their little images they've got these eyes all over the place and it looks kind of spooky anyway um, what they're saying is that if you have a Nord VPN and it's not um, and it's not under the jurisdiction of any of the 14 eyes your privacy is more or less secured but if you don't have a Nord VPN or if you do and it's under the jurisdiction of one of these countries you, they cannot guarantee privacy. Anyway, so the five eyes believe privacy is not absolute and that tech companies must give law enforcement agencies access to user communications, even the encrypted ones. That's like the ones that I send from 
my brother to myself, my daughter to myself, they want to have access to all of those messages. The five eyes are intelligence agencies based in the USA, Australia, New Zealand, Canada and the UK. In 2013, Edward Snowden leaked that the members had been spying on each other's citizens and swapping data to avoid domestic regulations, which state that legally countries cannot spy on their own citizens. It is prohibited by their laws. In the Five Eyes countries, user data, even if encrypted, may still be monitored, stored, shared without your consent. I think we know that. I mean, as much as we go up in arms about, oh, we don't want our data shared, we know it gets shared. We know it gets shared because we see customised adverts popping up on our screens. We know it gets shared via the electoral um, register. And, you know, we know it gets shared. So this isn't any new information and we shouldn't be surprised. Anyway, the same applies to the 14 eyes countries, which includes Denmark, France, the Netherlands, Norway, Germany, Belgium, Italy, Spain and Sweden. And if you add the five I's to that, that makes 14. I know that amount of maths. Anyway, to keep your privacy, it's recommended you obtain a VPN service that operates outside these countries. Using NordVPN, your IP address will be changed and your online activities will be encrypted without any locks. The five eyes are concerned that companies like WhatsApp deliberately design systems in a way that precludes any form of access to the content, even in cases of the most serious crime. So, um, let me see, where am I? Silicon Valley companies want to develop ghost protocols to gain access to our encrypted content on WhatsApp. WhatsApp has got encryption inbuilt by default, so third parties can't get access. If they're worried about our safety, all they've got to do is confiscate the phone. That's my little, um, that's my little two pence worth. You know, I don't see why, if they have an issue with somebody, why they can't just confiscate the phone and get the information on it. I mean, we have ways and means of making you talk. Anyway, um, they should not be allowed to read um, lock, stock and barrel everything we put on WhatsApp. I mean, to be honest, like the police said, they don't want to see everybody's WhatsApp, but they do want to be able to access information if they catch a criminal. They do want to know what he's been saying or who he's been communicating with just in case they've been communicating in that way. And I can understand how that happens. I mean, when we think about what's been happening in Dayton, Dayton Ohio, and we think about what's the, the domestic terrorism in um, um, West Texas, El Paso, I mean, there was three, there actually there was three over the weekend, but we only, the main one that got the highlight was El Paso. But he could have been texting someone. He could have been, I'm not saying he did, but he could have WhatsApp somebody and said, look, I'm going to do this or blah, blah, blah. And by having that information, it might help. It might um, help the police um, find out whether or not he was in collaboration with anyone, that kind of stuff. So I can understand to a degree how it can help. But the same token, I think they'd have to use their discretion and not have blanket um, access to everybody's phone. I think, number one, that would be information overload. I'm sure the systems would crash, probably. But I guess, um, yeah. So, most of us have nothing of consequence on our phones, but things we write about that we would not say in front of our parents could be embarrassing. And that same embarrassment extends to third parties, stranger reading our messages. Yeah, it's just like sometimes you might say the odd um, inappropriate thing to a friend or a colleague or a spouse. And it's something that, you know, you probably wouldn't say in front of an employer or you wouldn't say it in front of your parents, or you wouldn't want, you know, any and anybody to see that side of you or to know that's what you shared. So those kind of things, you're not going to want anybody snooping in and reading them. And I think when you're thinking about sharing information, I think it's things like that where you have a lapse of thought or a lapse of judgment and you say something that you 
would you should maybe shouldn't have said and then you know you're thinking oh my god the old bill's going to get hold of that what's he going to think you know and that kind of stuff so i mean most of the times like i say you know it's um what we say or what we write is inconsequential but sometimes it could be of some consequence to somebody so police claim they do not want to random they don't want random access but want if they have a warrant to be able to access messages so like i said confiscate the phone that's me so blah blah blah, blah. i put my little comments in just to kind of jog my memory but sometimes i've already said it and then when i'm reading it i'm kind of reading it out twice so forgive me for that government wants to check a back wants to create a backdoor system that accesses the operating platform but they currently cannot do it with whatsapp they reckon they can't do it with facebook but I have my doubts about that. And I think, well, I do have my doubts about Facebook because I think there was something to say that they were giving out information, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I think there might be aspects of Facebook that they have access to. But I think what Facebook wants to do now is the actual messaging system. They want to do end-to-end -end encryption on that. So maybe currently the messages don't have it have that enter in encryption but i'm still not quite sure about that to be honest um so we have we have um the police and the fbi using emotive phrases just like child abuse terror plots and stuff like that to you know it's a guilt throwing really for whatsapp to think oh my god you know am i preventing them from doing their work but um yeah, I think privacy is a very important thing and we need to hold on for it, hold on to it as long as possible. It's, we're going to come to a point where everyone's going to have to let go. No one's going to have any privacy at some point. We're heading that way. So, and like they say, you know, if you've got nothing to hide, what do you worry about? But it's about when you're dealing with people, different cultures and different ways of expressing themselves, Things can be misconstrued. So I don't even think it's about not necessarily having something to hide, but it's how things could be misconstrued in translation. And I think that's when people are concerned about when people accessing their messages. How are they going to construe that message? You know, to, I'll give you an example. You, we have some Jamaican sound systems. And when you hear them, say, kill them and boom, bye, bye. And, they, you know, when they say that, that one, kill that one and murder. I mean, anybody not understanding that culture and they hear some say, murder, they're going to think that somebody's going to kill someone. But they're actually talk using um, language for the music. And it's actually the, the DJs are talking about how one um sound or one um dub plate can kill another dub plate but if you don't understand the culture and if you don't understand the language it could be misconstrued as somebody going to attack somebody or someone's going to murder someone and sometimes it can you know because um um, black people tend to gesticulate so much more. They're more animated, more expressive, more loud, more passionate. It can, if you don't understand the culture, you can feel threatened by it. So what I'm, why I'm mentioning that is because when you're communicating, whether it's through WhatsApp or whatever, or you're listening to messages and you hear that kind of phrasing, it could be misconstrued. Anyway, I tend to go off the point all the time. Anyway, um, after the Five Eyes Security Summit, uh, which took place on the 29th and 30th of July, Priti Patel, her name comes up again, said tech firms should not empower criminals with their product. I mean, oh man, as if, you know, the phone companies are thinking about empowering criminals. I mean, the criminals are minority. So do you think they're making their phones and their software to empower criminals? Of course they're not. They're a minority. And I mean, most real top-notch criminals, they're not going to be using WhatsApp anyway. 
Well, I don't think so. I'm sure they must have some other strategy of how to communicate with whoever they're communicating with. But anyway, how am I? Just a little old gal from London. Anyway, senior ministers from the Five Eyes Partnership compromised comprised of the UK, Australia, Canada, New Zealand and the US, met tech firms at the London meeting dis to discuss security issues. I've got a funny feeling when they meet, they will get their way. They're going to talk Facebook around. I can guarantee that because they have so much power and influence. How can you go against five countries? I mean, I don't know. But, um, Facebook might be powerful enough. They might have enough clout, enough influence to go against them. I don't know. Um, let me see. They voiced their concern about end-to-end -end encryption used by message apps such as WhatsApp and Telegram. I haven't even heard of Telegram. I'll have to look that one up. I wonder if it's like WhatsApp. Have you heard of Telegram? If you have, stick a little comment in so you can tell me a bit about it. Um where only the message sender and receiver can see its content. So that's WhatsApp and Telegram, where only the message sender and receiver can see its content. So you can be rest assured that WhatsApp and its current state is secure. Um, the platform itself cannot read messages, meaning that there is no way for investigators to obtain information on criminal activity directly from the firms. Facebook is considering using end-to-end -end encryption on Facebook Messenger and Instagram Direct. So they are thinking about it. I don't know what's the outcome after this meeting, though. Writing in the Telegraph, Ms Patel, pretty Patel, called for tech companies to provide a back door into such messaging apps, which could be used by law enforcement organisations to tackle crime. Everything is under the guise of tackling crime. Oh, it's getting a bit like, you know, like when you watch um, um, X Factor or Britain's Got Talent and they say the same old phrase, oh, you're the best one ever. You know, they have that same old phrasing year after year. That's what this is becoming like. Tackling crime is becoming like a buzzword. It's so repetitive until it loses its power. We know we, you want to tackle crime. But I don't know if getting a backdoor into WhatsApp app is going to help you. I mean, who's got the time anyway? Have they really got the time and resources to go through all of the WhatsApps and all of the messages? I mean, they can't even cope with what they've got already. So I don't know how they plan to do this. Maybe they plan to do it with algorithms. Maybe, you know, like um, I think YouTube, they have, they have a software that picks up certain terms, certain words. So maybe it's something like that if you say something. And that's why I'm saying it could be misinterpreted depending on your culture, depending on your phrasing, depending on your intonation. You know they've got um, a software. It's a bit like Alexa, but it actually um, picks up sounds. So if there's a certain pitch, it'll send an alarm to the police station. It's, I don't know if Amazon's using it, and it's got a name, but I can't think of the name now because I didn't really intend to speak on it. But, uh, but anyway, it's, um, anyway, I was just thinking about that because I'm just thinking when um, they're listening to voice messages and that, and that machine kicks in. They were saying that it wasn't that effective because it picked up like a baby's cry as an alarm. Or they picked up people playing in the street, playing football in the street. Or somebody having a high-pitched voice. They picked up all of those things up as an alarm. So it's not that effective. Um, anyway, once again, going off the point. Um, Recently announced plan to apply end-to-end -end encryption across its messaging platforms presents significant challenges, that's Facebook, which we must work collaboratively to address, she said. This is pretty Patel. The use of end-to-end -end encryption in this way has the potential to have serious consequences for the vital work which companies 
already undertake to identify and remove child abuse and terrorist content. I was just thinking it must be so frustrating because, you know, they're setting up the 5G and, you know, you've got your smart meters and you've got all of these little um, instruments and technology to, you know, make our lives an open book, basically. And then you have people like WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger messing, up, messing that up. It must be frustrating for them. <clears throat> So anyway, um, <clears throat> Mrs. Patel's comments do not mark the first time in recent years a Home Secretary has attempted to force phone apps into handing over encrypted messages. In 2017, Amber Rudd came under fire after calling for laws to build back doors into end-to-end -end encrypted messages services as a crime-fighting tool. It ha it's okay if they get access. They have to be prepared that people may not use the service. Oh, that's probably me saying, how do they know that these criminals are going to be using WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger? I'm sure people who are really going to commit a crime like that, a terrorist crime or something, I'm sure they would meet face, face to face or meet in a car or some corner or something. I doubt very much whether they're going to send something on Facebook or WhatsApp telling each other what they're going to do. I can't imagine somebody doing that, but I might be naive. You know, maybe, you know, what's obvious is not really obvious. So whereas I might think, oh yeah, then obviously not going to do that. Maybe that's the way they are going. I, I, it's beyond me all of this kind of stuff. Anyway, the plans were met with criticism at the time from Robert Hannigan, a former head of GCHQ, who claimed that they would amount to weakening security for everyone to t to tackle a minority. Encryption is an overwhelmingly good thing. It keeps us all safe and secure, he added. In a joint communique released at the end of the summit, the Five Eyes countries said tech companies should include mechanisms in the design of their encrypted products and services, whereby governments acting with appropriate legal authority can obtain access to data in a readable and usable, usable format. U.S. Attorney General, General William Barr said throughout this week, I think that was last week, we had substantive, frank and positive discussions surrounding our shared duty to protect public safely, safety, including those related to the Internet. So somebody's bent, it looks like. But I tell you something, I can't see anybody standing up to those five powers. They'd have to have some real clout. So encryption represents a unique challenge. We must ensure that we do not stand by as advances in technology create spaces where criminal activity of the most heinous kind can go undetected and unpunished. Indeed, Making our virtual world more secure should not come at the expense of making us more vulnerable in the real world. Industry representatives, including ex executives from Facebook, Google, Microsoft and Twitter, agreed to collaborate with member states on a set of voluntary principles to combat child exploitation, including live streaming of abuse. Um, well, what's that wasn't there? As 5G looms, the only thing hindering complete abandonment of our rights is end-to-end -end encryption. WhatsApp is still holding strong. The principles are due to be finalised by the end of September. That's just next month. Meanwhile, a set of five commitments for the five I states were agreed by ministers. They include sharing learning on cyber threats, ensuring security in 5G networks and creating a stronger approach to the misuse of drones. They also committed to exploring enhanced cross-border information sharing and to maintain efforts to combat foreign interference in elections. You know, talking about those drones, I was reading something today where they had these drones 
over the canal, you know, where people go on boats and try to come into countries illegally. Well, before they used to send out ships to save them. Now they've got drones. Um, I don't know if they're filming them or what they're doing. They're not helping them, though. It's to discourage them. But they know what they're doing. Anyway, that's all for now. You might find that useful. You may not. But I'm still here to share information. Bye-bye.